Yeah, so believe it or not, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little nervous um, right now. I have been giving a lot of presentation, especially in, in, uh, in front of this audience, um, even though there are some new faces, as every time, which is great. Um, it is actually the, the first presentation um, I'm giving um, as, um, I think I'm by now president, I'm a co-founder, and I'm a CTO of Entwine 2.0. So we felt that um, with, with the release of the new admin UI and moving OpenCast to a 2.0, it was also time for Entwine to become a 2.0. And uh, I'll go into uh, more detail soon what that means. So when I was um, introducing the company to people um, that were not part of the community before, um, I, was I would usually tell them that we're not your typical kind of vendor. They would like that a lot, even though they didn't know what it means, because <laughs> nobody likes vendors, you know, they want to enforce their products on you and want to, you know, get all your money and, well, you know that story. And, um, <laughs> and um, we'll, we'll make sure, even though we're transforming to an Entwine 2.0, we will still remain that not so typical kind of vendor, even though we're going to add a little bit of the typical vendor aspect. So let's first talk about the things um, we're well known for, at least in this community. And Stuart has been nice enough to, to already more or less mention what that means. So we're doing um, three, th three things currently. We are, I actually have this thing here, you see. Um, so we're providing an end-to-end -end architecture for everyone that is looking to implement an electric capture solution, and ideally that electric capture solution is based on OpenCast. That's where we are of most value to, to people. Um, we make sure the um, architectures are future-proof and lock-in free, which is not typical or common um, when you're approaching electric capture systems. We can help you with AV integration and capture agent selection. Um, you have heard by now that we're working with a number of capture agent vendors. We have good relationships um, with all of them. We, we try to keep those active and alive um, because we see great value in having a lot of capture agent vendors in the community and make sure you know their devices just work. And we'll help you decide you know which agent is perfect for you and your needs. Um, we develop strategies for encoding, processing, and um, publication and archival. So we want to make sure you know you're something wrong with the mic, I think. It's fine. I'll carry on then. Um, we'll make sure that you know if it, like if you use OpenCast out of the box, you'll eventually see videos be online. Um, that's probably not the whole story um, you're looking for. You want to make sure you're actually encoding into formats that you know work um, for your students. You want to make sure you're able to pull the recordings up in case that one teacher that you recorded back when um, is, is um, given the, the um, Nobel Prize, things like that. That's what you want to think about when you start setting up your lecture capture system, and we'll make sure you're asking the right questions. And along with that, we do everything else to help you be successful. Um, most of you know there's much more to open to, to an electric capture system, a successful one, and Stuart um, has proven that, and also Richard Rees, who did the opening keynote yesterday, talked about that a couple of times. You need many more things to be successful. You need policies in place, you need um, backing from, from management, ideally you need integration and, and interfacing with um, your e-learning team. It's usually not just IT putting up the solution and you know then we're done not the case. The other thing we do is um, we do development and deployment. Um, this is what we're known for as well in this community. Um, we help you integrate with um, external systems. I think um, some of them have been mentioned. Syllabus Plus is very um, hip in this room, I learned. Everybody seems to be running Syllabus Plus, at least in the UK. But um, we also helped integrate um, Adobe CQ5, which is a content management system. R25 is another scheduling and timetabling system. We develop extensions of OpenCast. So most of the um, pull requests that we open, which means um, code contributions we do as Entwine, we mostly um, do those in the name of some client that we work with that is asking us to extend OpenCast in this or that way. 
And um, one of the things to mention here, the opt-out policies that um, Stuart allowed us to implement metadata harvesting for ETH Zurich and integration with a legacy system um, that would be switched in this case that were running podcast producer when they started working with us. And um, we do customize DevOps training. There are at least um, two institutions in this room that went through this. I should say suffer, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but um, they are still here, they're um, up and running, at least almost up and running, so the training can, can't be that bad. <laughs> and our, our marketing department insisted I put this on the slide as well. Um, it is Swiss quality engineering you're looking at, so all of our engineering team, with the exception of one Canadian, you need to have a Canadian on your team, <laughs> um, is all based in Zurich. Last but not least, and this is really, really important to us and has been a, a cornerstone from the very beginning, um, is we are a community member. That means we're contributing back 90 plus percent of the code base. As I said, most of the work we do, we do for clients and we almost always convince them, quote unquote, um, to make sure that the work they have us do is compliant with uh, the community, so it can be contributed back. I'll not go into detail what all the um, advantages are of that approach for the client and for us, obviously. Um, but I'm happy to talk about those over beers. Um, we even convinced them to spend um, arbitrary work um, on OpenCast, and I'll go into um, the practices we use um, later on. There's a lot of psychology involved when running a company. That's what I learned. Overall, we're trying to actively shape the community in all levels, so we have um, five um, committers or contributors with um, Basel Brunner being the, the latest member to join the club. Um, we have Andy, uh, my co-founder, sitting on the board of OpenCast trying to move the project on, on the highest level. So we really are involved and want to be involved and uh, will stay involved. What you might not be know we're doing already is we're um, providing support for your OpenCast installation. Our Swiss quality engineering team is ready to help you and support you um, if you run into problems. We have guaranteed response times based on criticality that you select. So we have an online system. You, you put your problem in. You tell us whether it's like really urgent, like you're down or, or um, you know, it has some more time. Depending on that, we'll, we'll charge you different rates. Um, we'll do preventative maintenance and monitoring for you, so we'll work with you to make sure we're able to monitor um, the health of your system and ideally prevent and detect problems ahead of time. And this is the best part. That's the part that I really like about our support contracts. Unused hours, so you'll buy a monthly number of hours. Let's say you buy five hours of, of um, support time or maybe ten. If at the end of the month those five or ten hours you didn't use, they won't be moved over to the next month, month unfortunately for you. Um, but fortunately enough for you and for the community, they will be contributed towards OpenCast. So we'll sit down and fix arbitrary bugs that are in the OpenCast bug tracker. We'll do documentation. We'll do QA work. Um, so that money is, is not lost as in many, many other support contracts. And that is available today. I've learned you need to put these kind of things on the slides too. So you can start having support contracts with us. And even, even though you are perfectly able to run your own system and you don't need support, it may still be worth doing a support contract with us where we're investing all the money into OpenCast. So if you want to support OpenCast, this is one way of doing it. Enter a support contract with us. And you might still have a question here and there that we could then answer for you. So now we're starting the transformation of the company with, uh, with the great team of engineers that we have. We thought it would be um, a good time to move forward. This is Entwine 2.0 coming. This is our first product that we're announcing. It's called the Enterprise Toolkit. Um, you have, if you have been a member of the community uh, or this community, you have learned that um, OpenCast is a fantastic product but it's also horribly hard to set up and master. Obviously, this has changed over the past, um, but it's still um, 
not a piece of cake, I would say. We obviously ran into the same things. You know, we had to set up Matterhorn many, many times. And um, so we um, put quite a bit of effort um, over the past two years into coming up with a set of tools or set of scripts that allows us to set up a cluster of um, OpenCast, no matter which size, um, in a few minutes. So if you have the hardware ready, the firewall rules set up correctly, we can deploy OpenCast in under 20 minutes, even on clusters the size of, um, of Manchester. We're supporting Red Hat and CentOS. Those scripts can be supported. They can be taken as a basis um, to support you know, other things like Debian, but you'll need to put in some work. We're recommending Red Hat or CentOS to our clients, which is why we have put time into these kind of scripts. All of the madness that you could experience or, or meet while doing an install um, is built in, or at least almost all of the madness. So Shibboleth and CAS are, are some of the things, and, and if you happen to meet or run into proxy issues, um, then, hey, Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> it is built in, and they're, they're, um, the scripts are um, taking care of that. Um, those scripts, obviously, are also the basis, or can be the basis, of fully automated deployments. Um, so we do, um, we have a nightly server up and running, as I'm sure many of you do. We're using the same scripts um, to do that. All this is based on Ansible and Vagrant. You've, been, you've heard man Ansible mentioned a couple of times. So um, we're using the same technology many others are using. We partly introduced the technology um, to these guys, and I think it's a, it was a very good decision to move forward in that. Using the enterprise toolkits, you'll uh, work like the experts. That would be us. Um, it can also be translated to eat your own dog food. Um, so we're using those scripts on a daily basis for development and for deployment, um, internally and externally. Um, so you can be sure they, they work, at least with the things we work with. And we're happy to take more input and, and you know, add to those scripts and setups as um, you find or identify additional problems. You'll basically get all of Entwine's knowledge in one set of scripts. So we've been working on automating Entwine. Um, there you go. It is available for all supported versions of OpenCast. Lars iterated on what those versions were in the, um, this morning. I think it's three um, at the time, or two, or something like that. And um, there will be an updated version at least every three months. So we're continuously working on improving those scripts, and we'll be sharing the updates with you. Best part is it's included in the support contract. So if you're having a support contract with Entwine, um, you will get the scripts for free as long as the contract is running. And it's available May 1st, 2015, by the way. And um, as usual, there's um, one last thing, which is um, OpenCast for everyone. I'm especially proud to present this to you now. So we've seen that um, <coughs> setting up OpenCast and running it is, a, is a, not a piece of cake, as we said. And especially, that's especially true if you don't have the infrastructure. Looking at Harvard, looking at Manchester, you know, there are tons and tons of, of petabytes of storage, hopefully, <laughs> available. Um, virtual machine infrastructure, a decent network team, and so on and so forth, and especially all the staffing behind that and the knowledge. Um, as Chris Brooks, a former mem member of the community, said, um, OpenCast will be a pig on your infrastructure. And that is still true. You're, you're transferring many, many gigabytes of data. And um, so we really thought um, there should be an OpenCast for everyone, especially for those um, that can't run or host or don't feel like running or hosting OpenCast ourselves. So what we're offering starting June 1st um, is at OpenCast as a hosted service. Um, we're adding um, Video Lounge to the mix, which is the video portal we developed um, that has been um, presented by Stuart a couple of times. Um, you can take a look um, at our booth. I, I'm not sure I can call that a booth. It's more a table than a booth, but anyways. And um, we're continuously um, evolving that platform as we go. We'll keep, we'll keep contributing back, but um, we'll make sure that the um, 
hosted version is up to date at any given time. It will be a login free environment as compared to other non login free environments. You'll have the ability because it's fully based on OpenCast, there are no seek like it's more or less the 2.0 code base at this point in time. Um, you'll be able to take the data down if you're unhappy with the service, run it on premise. We'll even help you install it if you want. Um, and um, you can also take the opposite way. So you can start out with a local Matterhorn cluster. And once you're done looking at your local Matterhorn cluster and running it and dealing with it, and uh, you're getting bashed by your network department, these kind of things, um, you can easily transition all of your data into OpenCast just because it's the same open um, code base, the same open endpoints, even local integrations, depending on how you did them, should work with, with the hosted version. Yeah, so I'm very thankful you have been here. It was a great time for me, a great moment, and uh, thanks for being with us all that time. Well, there's a few new things there for me. One, that you have a marketing department. <laughs> uh, so any questions from the floor? Okay, then. Over to you, Stuart. Okay, then. Uh, so can we have nice. another round of applause for all of our suppliers? We're very grateful for their sponsorship. <laughs>